Hi, I'm Brian Williams from Northshire Consulting. Thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this fund review. In this video, we'll talk a little bit about the fund family that we're in. We'll talk about fees and expenses, performance against the category, and then we'll wrap it up with how this fund might fit into your overall portfolio. This is considered one of our shorter form fund reviews. If you're looking for a little more in-depth analysis, check out some of our longer form fund reviews that fall into that 10 to 15 minute range. Hey, quick reminder here, anything in this group or in this YouTube channel is just general education, not specific tax, legal, or investment advice. Consult with your advisor before you act on any of this information. A reminder too that we are an investment advisory firm, no affiliation to this fund, and we may or may not have a position in it with client assets. Before we get into the specifics of this fund, let's take a moment to talk about Vanguard as a fund family. With $7 trillion under management and working with almost 30 million investors, many are familiar with the Vanguard name. They're most commonly known for their index or passive investing, but they have really strong roots in active management as well. They're client-owned, which means fund shareholders own the fund, which in turn own Vanguard. This is an exchange-traded fund, which means a couple things to you as an investor. First of all, you can buy that throughout the day. So if you place an order at 10 o'clock, that order is going to go in at 10 o'clock and get executed shortly thereafter. The other thing about an exchange traded fund is the securities in the portfolio need to be reported on a daily basis. So if we contrast those two things to a mutual fund, mutual fund you put in an order at any point in the day, it gets executed based on end of the day values. Mutual fund reporting does not have to be on a daily basis. So when you're looking at what's inside a mutual fund, that can be delayed a little bit. So that's a key difference between mutual funds and ETFs. Also with mutual funds, there are five letter tickers and they end in X, whereas ETFs are typically two, three, four letter tickers, um, but not the five letter tickers that end in X. This is an index or passively managed fund. That means the portfolio is put together from a rules-based list. That's different from an actively managed fund. An actively managed fund is where you have a team of portfolio managers and analysts deciding which securities and to what quantity will be in the fund. This fund is open to new investors, and this is not a leveraged fund. When we look at a basic asset allocation like this, there's a couple things that we look at. The first is stock to bond ratio or equity to bond ratio. So bonds, we have non-US, US, and cash, we usually lump into that category as well. So as you can tell by this portfolio, it's more so weighted in bonds than equities. What that means is it's going to be a little bit more conservative. History tells us that bonds have produced us a lower rate of return, but also with a little bit less risk. The other ratio we want to look at is U.S. versus non-U.S. As you can see by this portfolio, it's primarily invested in the U.S. So we want to make sure that fits in with our overall allocation and our complete risk tolerance profile. We always talk about expenses when we do our fund reviews. Here's why. The expense ratio is taken from the return that the portfolio produces. The expense ratio is internal meaning you don't necessarily see it, it comes out in the returns. We need a point of reference when we compare these expenses, so we use the category average. As you can see here, the expense ratio is significantly lower than the category average. Now that we've looked at expenses, what exactly are we paying for? We're hoping that if we own this fund, that expense will help us outperform the other funds in the category. This fund has outperformed its peer group six out of the last 10 years. Thanks again for watching this fund review. We encourage you to subscribe, like, and comment below with your feedback. Be sure to check out our longer form fund reviews and our Facebook group, 401k and beyond.